Welcome to this video on creating a small application in Scheme. So far all we've looked at is programming techniques, but in this video we're going to look at how you handle creating something that's actually a little bit useful. My name's Andy Wicks and I'd like to start by recapping a couple of the concepts we looked at in the last video. We looked at mapping, that's doing something to each atom in a list. We looked at filtering, and that's where you get a new list based on some condition. And finally, we looked at folding, or reducing as it's sometimes called, where a list gives a single result. Last time we assumed that I'd marked the work for a class, and that the results were these. Now those who got zero didn't submit, and I really, I'm really not interested in those. But it was agreed that my marks should be raised by five for all those who had submitted. Obviously, I don't want to raise the marks by five for those who didn't. And finally, I'd like an average score for those who've ended up with a grade over 40. In other words, those who scored enough to pass. So what are the overall tactics? Well, first of all, I'm going to calculate the mean for the raw scores to make sure that our techniques work. All I want to do is make sure I can calculate a mean accurately. Then I'd like to increase all the scores by five for those who've scored more than zero. Then I'd like to create a new list of those who've now scored over 40. And finally, I'd like to calculate the mean of this new list. So, as you know, what we do is we plan in advance and we check as we go along. So first of all, I want to find the total of the grades. Then I want to find out how many grades I've got. Next, I divide the total of grades by the number of grades to get the mean of the grades. Well, as we saw in the previous video, to get the total of the grades, I use a fold R function. So fold R plus zero, and then the list of the grades. And that should give me 456. I can find the number of items by using length. So if I find the length of grades, that should give me 12, because there were 12 grades. And finally, if I divide the total by the length, well, that should give me 38. I've used the fold R, which by now I will have checked works, and I've used the length as the two items in the divide function. So what I'd expect is to get 38. But before we go any further, of course, we want to test things. Here I have my list of grades defined. Now I need to check each step of the process as I go. In the previous video, we used the fold R function to get the total of the grades. So let's make sure that I've done this right. If I do Control and R, I should get 456. And fortunately, I do. Now I can check how many items I have in my grades list. And for that, I need the length function. So if I run this now, I get 456 and 12. It's going well so far. Now what I want to do is to define a function. I want to define a new function called mean that takes two parameters, a total and a number. And then what it does is divide the total by the number of items. Now if I tried to run this, I wouldn't get anything because this is just a definition. So what I need to do is to tell it to run the mean function. So if we run the mean function with the piece of code that totals the grades and the length of the grades, what I should get is the mean score for the grades. And if I run this, well, I get 46, 12 and 38. What I've got is something that works. Now, what I do next is the important step. What I do next is I know that define mean works. It works correctly. So what I'm going to do is to get rid of those bits of testing. I can park the definition that works at the top of the program. Now I move on to the next stage. What I'd like to do is to add five to each grade. In the previous video, I used the map function to do that. And it's always a good idea to test. Let's make sure that that map function still works. If I run that, I get my list of grades with a 5 added to every item. But now what I'd like to do is to put that as a function. So if I 
change that now so that it's included in a function, I could have something like a function called change grade, which takes a parameter g and then does the map function of adding 5. Now I need to make sure that that works. Now I need to run that check grade with the list of grades. And if I do that, that gives exactly the same answer as before. Things are looking quite good, but there is a problem. I want to exclude those that scored 0. So if I alter my change grades function, here I've changed the function that the map is working on. What I've done is put an if in. If the grade I'm looking at is 0, just return 0. If it isn't, add 5. And that should give me the list of grades with 5 added except for those that have a zero. And if I run that, well, as you can see, most of the grades stay the same. And as you can see, most of the grades have five added, but there are still the two zeros. I've managed to exclude those from the adding five bit. Now we've got that working. We've got a function that works. So we do the same thing again. We just park it at the top. The next step is to filter out those who've got a pass grade. In other words, who scored more than 39. And from the previous video, we've got a function like this. Here, we're looking at filtering. Filtering also takes a lambda function. And we're going to filter the grades greater than 39. If I run this, I get that set of grades, that set of five grades. But I haven't taken, but I'd like to create a function. So I'm going to create my own function called pass that does exactly what I've just done. The only difference being that it's now a function called pass that takes a parameter g. So now I can test this with pass grades. And if I run this, but now I get all those who've scored over 40. This is good, but I haven't taken the add 5 into account. And to do that, I need to change the definition of the pass function. I need to change it to something that looks far more like... So here, I've substituted the old grades that we had for change grades the ones that have been uplifted by 5 if their score is over 0. And if I run that, well now I get 6 items returned because the one who scored 36 originally has now passed. Now I can play the same trick again. I know that pass grades works because I've checked it. So now I can move on to the final step. The final step is to run that mean function again. We wrote it in such a way that it would work regardless. Now what I want is the total, the fold R plus zero, the total of the pass grades divided by the length of the pass grades. And that should give me the mean for those who've passed. Now if I run that, I get 70. Ah, now I can compare that to last year's average for those that had passed the module and see whether things have improved. If the students are taking the module seriously, then I'd hope that the grade has gone up from last year because then I've done something a bit better this year than last. But this is a program that works. It's an application. So what I want to do is to save that. So I go to File, Save Definitions, and I'll call this Mean Scores. I've now saved this, and so the next time I want to find the means of the passes, I can change the list of grades here, and maybe the amount that it's uplifted by, and I get the average next time round. I don't have to do all the programming again. I don't have to write a complex Excel sheet. I can just copy and paste. The trick, therefore, is to do everything slowly. Build up your functions, park them as you go, and then you can save and reuse at will.